took a breath You had a plan for my every step You promised to always be by my side I believe that you are the way You are the truth You are the lie So I sing this to you You keep your promises every day I will believe in everything that you say Yeah, in the dark I know you're making a way Jesus, I will trust you You're always good in everything that you do 
Hey, Cornerstone kids, are you ready for our memory verse? On your feet? Remember, I'll say our verse once and then we'll say it together. Ready? Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10 9, NIRV. Now let's say it together. Anyone who walks without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10 9, NIRV. Great job. Now have a seat and get ready for this week's true Bible story. Hey everyone, it's been fun talking about integrity this month. We've looked at some good examples about how to have integrity. And last week, we saw an example of what not to do. This week, we'll take a look at really important verse from the book of Philippians. Philippians, like many of the books in the New Testament, was written by a man named Paul. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna do really bad today. I'm gonna forget what I have to say. I might as well just give up. Hi, I'm Graham and I'm going to fail. Sorry, but I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And the truth is, the speech I have to give later today is going to go badly. I am supposed to talk to a bunch of strangers about different kinds of masks, but every time I give a speech, I get so nervous that everything I want to say comes out wrong. I don't know if this happens to you, but I keep hearing these voices in my head. You're not very good at talking to people. When you tell jokes, they stink. Other people are way better at this than you. The more I listen to these voices, the more I believe them. So it's probably better if I don't even do the speech today. You can't mess up if I don't try, right? That way you won't be embarrassed. Good point, teddy bear voice. So in today's story, we're learning about how to control what you think. <laughs> like that would be helpful. Wait, would that be helpful? No, I mean, no. Aw, oh, thanks for being honest, weird horse voice. I knew I could count on you. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. Horatio liked to keep track of things in his head. Five kinds of cereal in the cabinet. Seventeen braids on his sister Nala's head. Two voicemail messages left on his parents' landline phone. Oh, seriously, Mom? You are so stuck in the 1990s. Horatio was especially good at keeping track of things that went wrong. Number one, we're out of chocolate frosted sugar bomb cereal. Horatio's mother did not always appreciate his lists. I did not buy that. Your dad bought that. Number two, it is freezing in here. Put on a sweater. Number three, Miss Watson is making us do a group project and they are the worst because everyone else drags me down. Horatio, can you please focus on something positive for once? Just keeping it real. Oh, oh, I know about positive stuff. Miss Christie told us. Horatio's little sister, Nala, began rummaging around in the stacks of random paper on the counter. There is nothing positive about this morning and I'm positive about that. Nala pulled out a scribbled on handout and waved it triumphantly. Philippians 4, 8? Do not read me a coloring sheet. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Mom, make her stop bugging me. No, this is good. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Horatio just glared and checked out the lunch that Mom had packed. Is this strawberry jam in my sandwich? You know I only eat apricot jam. 
Over the next two hours, Horatio counted dozens of annoying things. Number one, this bus stinks like dirty socks stuffed with Cheetos. Number two, the classroom door needs some WD-40. Number three, Miss Watson is wearing yellow and I hate yellow. Number four, this pencil is making a giant callus on my finger. Number five, group projects are still the worst. Number six, it's way too hot over here. And to make matters worse, Miss Watson had put Tish James in charge of the group. Ugh. So, we get to do a report on Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. I'll write the history and Jordan, you can paint a picture and Horatio, you research stuff about the land and animals around it. Number seven, Tish is super bossy. Oh, and here's a picture of the lighthouse. Tish held up a glossy photograph and Horatio opened his mouth ready to complain about how boring lighthouses were, but he couldn't do it. Hatteras Lighthouse spiraling into the sunset sky was breathtaking. He could picture walking the beach and waves crashing as the warm light glowed overhead. Ah. And Horatio couldn't help hearing an echo of his little sister's voice. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. <laughs> there it was, right in front of his face. Horatio found brand new thoughts forming in his brain. Hey, that looks really cool. That's amazing. It was as if a switch had flipped in Horatio's head. After seeing one good thing, he started to see more. Jordan had brought in some paintings he had done. Number one, Jordan, you are a really great artist. Ms. Watson helped Horatio solve some tough fractions by drawing a funny sketch. Number two, Ms. Watson is a super creative teacher. Mom had packed homemade cookies and Horatio's lunch. Number three, my mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies on the planet. Who wants to share? By the time Horatio got off the school bus. Number four, Mr. Rob drove us right up to our house because of the rain. He was actually smiling. Mom met them at the door. Hey kids, how was school? At that moment, Nala shook out her wet umbrella all over Horatio. And for a moment, Horatio frowned. Nala braced herself. Uh, sorry. Number five, I have a closet full of dry clothes upstairs. Nala's eyebrows shot way up. What happened to you? Nothing. I just realized I've got some pretty great things to focus on. So your day went okay? Number six, it was positively awesome. Horatio beamed and ran upstairs to change his wet shirt. He had a lot of brand new lists to make up in his head. Ah, Brando, I see you've come to take over the show today. Well, not if I have anything to do about it. <laughs> Who show is it now, Brando? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it is mine, Jonzo. <laughs> You dare show your face around here. I will not let you take over this show today, eh? Oh, God! Oh, oh, oh. You were saying? And welcome to the so-and-so show. What an incredible show we have for you today, right, Brandon? Yeah, well, incredible is a strong word. Well, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's the perfect good. word for today's show. I don't think so. Uh, uh okay. Okay, how about strum diddly umptious? Strum diddly umptious, when words don't suffice, and only a strum will do. Yeah, that's definitely not the word. Okay, what word would you use to describe today's show? Fine. Yeah. 
Fine. Come up with a word. Fine. We're waiting. Fine. No, you don't have to get upset with me. I'll still be no. patient with you. Listen. Fine. 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 Yes, I think today's show will be fine. Fine? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or that's it? Satisfactory. Satisfactory. Are you kidding yeah. me? The show is amazing today. Meh. Buddy, what's going on? Nothing. I just I just don't want to get too excited. That's all. Why not? Because the, Life can sometimes be hard, and I don't think that we should forget that. Uh, well, yeah, life can be hard, but life can be great, too. Yeah, but if I remind myself that things can always get much, much worse th than when they actually do get worse, I won't be surprised. Okay, okay, okay. What if something happens that is really exciting to you? Oh, like this. I love that. That is so funny. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, what just happened? I just... I thought about the fact that some flowers have thorns, and if you walk by them, they can scratch you. I don't understand you. Well, John, it's like this. Dog poo on new shoes and old rotten cabbage. Expired goat's milk and overweight baggage. Using a dull spoon to shave off my scruff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. Flu germs in smoothies and watered down soda. Hearing the spoilers about Baby Yoda. My leg impaled by a billy goat's gruff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. You put a lot of thought into this. You have no idea. These things on eyelids and freeze pops in bathrooms. Falling from tall trees, smelling diesel car fumes. Rice Krispies with mayonnaise, not marshmallow fluff. This is just some of my least favorite stuff. When I'm laughing, when my team wins, when I'm feeling rad, I simply remember my least favorite stuff, and then I don't feel so glad. It's Bible story time with Kellen. What's up, fellas? Just trying to cheer this guy up. Why? What's wrong? Well, Kellen, it's like this. No! Not sure what's going on, but can you guys help me out with today's story? Sure, what did you have in mind? This. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Host Feud. We are joined today by our contestants, Brandon's team and John's team. Brandon, who have you brought with you today? Uh, it, well, it looks like I have a mannequin uh, with my picture on it. Not sure how helpful that's going to be. Speak for yourself, Brandon. Okay, that's weird. Uh, and also, I have a picture of my childhood cat, Catherine the Great. Hey, ow. Hello, Kellen. Fantastic. John, who's on your team? Well, I have an enlarged picture from my eighth grade yearbook. Hey, Kellen. Hey, me. You look great. No, you look great. Aww. And uh, also on my team is a potato. Top of the morning, everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Let's hop to it. Let's play the host feud. The top eight answers are on the board. We ask the question, according to the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4.8, what kinds of things should you think about? Brandon? Dull things. Dull things. Dull things, yes. All right, let's see dull things. Ooh, I am so sorry, Brandon. John? Uh, things that are noble. Yeah, 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 you should think of noble oh, good things. answer. All right. Let's see, Noble. Yes. Number two, Noble Things, John. Do you want to play or pass? Uh, what do you want to do? Play, play, 
Let's play. We're play. gonna play. Let's play. Kellen. We're gonna play, Kellen. Okay, I, I think we're gonna play, Kellen. We're gonna play. Kellen. We're gonna play. They're going to play. John's yearbook photo. According to Paul, what kind of things should you think about? Um, I'm gonna have to say excellent things. Good answer. Good, Good answer. answer. Good answer. All right. Let's see excellent things. Yes. Number seven. Well done. Potato, what do you think about? Well, as a potato, people always want to add things to me or cut me into little pieces. Tater tots, french fries, hash browns. But I prefer just being a pure potato. So I'm going to say pure things. Good answer. That's a good answer. Oh, good answer. Good answer. All right. Let's see pure things. Oh. Number four, nice job, Potato. Uh, Back to you, John. Let's go with uh, lovely things. Good answer. Good answer. Show me lovely. <laughs> you yeah. got it. John's yearbook photo. According to Paul, what kind of things should you think about? I don't know. How about uh, things or people you respect? Good answer. Good yeah. answer. Good answer. Good answer. Eighth line. grade John wants you to show him some respect. Oh, Number yes. six. John's team, you are on a roll. Potato, according to Paul, what kinds of things should you think about? Oh, I know what I think about a lot. Ketchup. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Um, show me ketchup. Uh, Ooh, what? that was your first strike. Two more, and Brandon's team has a chance to steal. What are you thinking about, John? What will Paul say? Um, um, I'm thinking about praiseworthy things. Praiseworthy things. Yes. Good answer. Show me good praiseworthy. Answer. Number eight, worthy of praise. John's yearbook photo? Uh, what was the question again? According to Paul, what kinds of things should you think about? Right, right, right. Oh, well, show me what is right. No, I was just... Oh, you got it. Number three. Gnarly. Huh. One answer left. Potato? Carved beef hash. That's a good answer. <laughs> no, what? No, that's just wrong. Show me. Corned beef hash. Shocking. It comes down to this, John. One answer left. You get it right, and you win. You miss it, and Brandon's team gets a chance to steal. The number one answer is still on the board. According to the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4.8, what kinds of things should you think about? Uh... I don't know. Uh, Ugh, I don't know. We need an answer. Um, Ooh, so sorry, John's team. All right, Brandon's team, do you have an answer? A balls of yarn, goldfish, myself. Uh, balls things of that yarn. are scary. Did I say that? Scary Catnip. things. Uh, really scary things. Scary things. So scary. Man, I wish this was a true or false quiz. That's it. True or false. Uh, true. Uh, you think of things that are true. That's it. Brandon's team wins. All right. Yeah, we win. Wow. Thank you to both our contestants. <laughs> this was the host team. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Great job. Great job, Brandon. Oh, good. good on you. That was fun, Kellen. Yeah, definitely. No doubt. Thanks for helping, guys. So to review, the Apostle Paul wrote this in Philippians 4, 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Oh, I think I get it. I've been choosing to think about things that are negative, things that aren't lovely or pure or true. I, I should be focusing on what Paul wrote about instead. Definitely. It may not feel like it sometimes, but you are in charge of what you think. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain, but you can definitely decide what you focus on. And if we focus on these things, it can help us live and think a little more like Jesus. Thanks, Kellen. You got it.
I'll see you guys later. See you. Yeah, bye, Kellen. What are you doing? I'm trying to, trying to control what I think about. It is not easy. Oh, well, don't think about me dressed like a Ninja Turtle going down a water slide. <laughs> oh, man, now that's all I can think about. <laughs> uh, reveal the question. Oh, what do you tend to focus on? Be honest. Sometimes I focus on what can go wrong, but after today, I'm going to work on that. Oh, great. And I'm gonna focus on excellent and true things like pizza with extra cheese and God's love. Now I'm thinking about pizza. Lunch? Let's do it. Awesome. See y'all later. Hey, I'm gonna, hey. What? You know what? I'll provide some lunch music. Oh, man. Yeah. Strum diddly um shus. On guard! <laughs> okay, if I have to, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, good yep. parry, good parry. Ah, no, oh, I see, where your move? Look at that. Aha, uh -huh, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 exhausting. But I won't give up. Hey, what's that? Huh? Oh, oh, the old what's that? I should have seen it coming. Oh. oh. Yeah, now it makes sense. The Apostle Paul wrote, Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. You know what that means? It means you're in charge of what you think about. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain. Think about fish. You must think about... But... You can control the thoughts that you focus on. No! <laughs> yes, you can. Having integrity doesn't just mean you're honest with other people. It means you're honest with yourself, too. And to do that, you need to try and focus on things that you know are true. Things like, God made you. God forgives you. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. And he's big enough to bring Jesus back from the dead. So he's bigger than all of the things that you and I worry about. So the one thing to remember from today is this. Focus on what's true. And if you ever feel like you can't control your thoughts or if the voices inside seem too loud, talk to someone you trust about it. Find someone who will help you stay focused on the truth of God's amazing love for you. You know what? I'm going to choose not to believe the voices that are telling me that I'm not any good. God made me. I am good. And then I'm going to try to give the best speech that I can. Bet you didn't see that coming, did you? No! <laughs> I mean, nope. Yeah, yeah, I thought not. I'll see you around, everybody. I'll be thinking about you. Bye. Everything changes when we put our focus on what is good in our lives. We just have to pause and remember what's true. God loves us. He gives us what we need. He's always with us through the good times and the tough times. If we focus on those things, we'll remember what matters most. Every day, you can decide where to put your focus, so focus on what's true. Let's pray and ask God to help us set our minds on Him. God, thank you for the things that we know are true. You made this amazing and a beautiful world. You made each of us and you love us. You have a good plan for our lives. Sometimes it can be hard for us to remember what's true. In those moments, please help us set our minds on you and think about all the good things you're doing in our lives. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. 
We are going to close our time together with a prayer slide for you and your family to share. And we will see you next week.